Welcome to the February 28th, 2024 special Board of Education meeting. Uh, if you take a minute to silence your phone and your computer and then join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All right, Mr. Hatfield, can you take a roll for us, please? Absolutely. President Rausch? Here. Vice President McFarland? Here. Secretary Hatfield is here. Treasurer Lauterbach? Here. Member Blazy? Here. Member Ringgold? Here. Member Horwitz? Present. All right, everyone is here. Thank you. Uh, next is request to address the board, so I'll start with Brandon Lewis. You just signing in? Oh, yeah, I was just <laughs> but the look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Well, thank you for coming. Is it, would anybody like to address the board at this time? All right. So moving on to item number three, which is uh, Board of Education Matters and, and the purpose that we're here tonight, which is to discuss each of these three candidates and their interviews. So um, I just wanted to collect my thoughts and, and provide you with some input that I reached out to Mike Ritchie with today. I had a question for him. So again, for the public, Mike Ritchie is our uh, consultant from Hazard uh, HYA, I'm forgetting the numbers. Thank you. Uh, our search firm and, and consultant. Um, obviously, we have big decisions in front of us and the most important ones that we make as school board members is hiring a superintendent. So um, I did reach out to Mike, um, just kind of ask him for his suggestions on what the best course of action for tonight was based on his experience from other districts. He does not suggest using a matrix. His suggestion was to work through pros and cons of each superintendent and then to ask yourself the critical question, which is, do you see this candidate as a superintendent of Midland Public Schools going forward? Um, so I wanted to take a moment to suggest kind of how we do this and, and how we walk through it and get your feedback. So I'll put this out there as a, as, as a format for potential discussion tonight would be, <clears throat> you know, obviously we have a lot of resources available in front of us. We have candidates' resumes, interview guide, their answers to that interview guide, and then we've received some public feedback, uh, both through the search portal as well as through our, our email. So I'd like to walk through the pros and cons of each candidate, and I'll purposely kind of work our way through hearing from each board member, because I think it's important to extract individual responses because um, I think this is ripe for groupthink if we're not careful. Um, so I wanna make sure that we extract everybody's uh, input on an individual basis. Um, but so I'll probably walk through each candidate, pros, cons, and then I'm gonna ask you the hard question that I want an honor, honest answer to is, can you see this person as our next superintendent? Um, I was reflecting on the way here on our vision statement, which is, you know, it begins with lead with respect, trust, and courage. And this is a moment that the community is counting on us, the school community, our larger community to make the right decision. Um, we have to discuss difficult topics, be vulnerable, and sometimes doing the right thing is to say that this candidate is not appropriate for Midland Public. Um, what I would like to, us to commit to is, I'll take a lot of notes, I'll try to summarize our feedback, because if a candidate is or is not selected for continuation, I think we owe it to that candidate to provide them concrete feedback. Um, and that's the most appropriate thing for us to do, so. 
any changes, suggestions? Does this type of a format work? Okay. Phil, I think you're spot on with everything that you had to say. We have difficult decisions to make. Um, my personal thing, as, as well as reviewing this video, the information that's available to us uh, through our portal, through um, letters to the board, um, I think that going from the 16 to the three that we have done so far, and this is my opinion, you wanted opinions, and I don't have enough exposure to these two new candidates. I don't think our public has enough exposure to these two new candidates. I believe that in order to do our due diligence in this, they made it this far, they did very well in their interviews. I would like to see day in the district for all three of those candidates that we interviewed on Monday night because I don't have enough to go on yet and I need more information from the elementary school, the middle school, the high school, the parent input, the public input. It's too big of a decision. I don't have enough to go on. I need more and I personally want to see all three of them do day in the district. I know it's a challenge to do three. I don't care. We have to do it. My opinion. Okay. Other um, input? Yeah, I, I absolutely understand where Mr. Blasey is coming from. I have, I have a slightly different opinion. Um, it's my opinion that if possible, if not, you know, if we can't come to any sort of agreement on two candidates, let me bring three back, but I have a belief that we can, <coughs> excuse me, narrow this down to two tonight, bring those two back, give them some really solid time in the district, not rush them through the district, and then evaluate those two candidates that we feel are strongest for that final, and potentially send them to a final interview, and then make a determination. Without getting into the merits of each candidate, I did feel that there were two that were substantially stronger than the third. Okay. Yeah, um, just to, to follow up, I think regardless of how many people we choose to move forward with, I think we owe it to our public to talk about the pros and cons of each candidate and whether or not we can see them as a, as a superintendent because it will inform our public of how <clears throat> maybe things that we want to draw out of that day in the district draw out of that candidate as we continue down the process. Mm -hmm. So um, I was thinking that maybe we just start pro and con with the, uh, the same order that we interviewed the candidates. So that would be with uh, Mr. Patrick Malley first. Um, so <clears throat> let's do this as I'm going to ask each board member to provide what did you like about Mr. Malley first? Um, what do you think he can bring to the table that pushes our district forward in the appropriate way? So we'll start with pros for Patrick first. I'll go, I'll go with, with Patrick. Um, I, I thought Patrick was uh, an energetic interviewer. Um, he was responsive to our questions um, I think he answered all of our questions which was good um, he is he likes to drive innovation which is nice I, I enjoyed his enthusiasm for new programming and for uh, community engagement and student engagement and faculty engagement um, so his experience uh, although I think is a little bit limited um, I think he's got a very very bright future um, as a superintendent uh, as far as cons go um, a lot of the innovations that he was talking about that he implemented throughout Bay City and, and even in in Meridian um, I kept thinking wow we've been doing that for three years 
while we've been doing that for five years. You know, everything, it seems like we are two, three, four steps ahead of. Uh, and that, I guess, is not necessarily a knock against him. It may just be a product of the district that he was in. But um, it seemed like a lot of we've been there, done that already. And so where are you going to take us? And, and that may lend a little credence to not knowing as much as I thought he should have known about the culture of MPS and, and the district and where we are with our initiatives and how he can drive those forward um, instead of a lot of it for me was maybe a step or two or three backwards. Okay. Brad, uh, provide thoughts on Patrick? Um. One of the positives that I, I heard was he engages well with parents and teachers, but also he had a committee, I believe, where he engaged with the business community as well. And that was very unique. We, one item we don't do at this moment in time is a formal committee. Um, I think that that's a very innovative thought and idea, and um, I did like that. Um, I would agree uh, with Scott in that um, smaller districts and um, some innovative things, but we are in a better spot, better position than those other districts, and we are um, striving to be even better than where we're at right now. And I'm not sure if I didn't get enough time with Patrick to know if, if, if he can take us to that next level. I don't know the answer to that yet. So I think that's, that's my pros and cons. And he has some bond experience. I, I like that. Um, but I'd like, to, I'd like to, I agree that he absolutely will be a great superintendent, whether that's here or somewhere else. Um, that's in his future. But I'd like to, like to get to know him better. Can, can you, because I had written down and actually highlighted when I was going back through the notes of the business community interaction, I thought when he said it, it was actually with respect to the question around community involvement. Um, and I thought what it was question number three. I thought what he said, and this is what I wrote down, was he had been involved in Rotary for one year to engage the business community. So I, I think he said he had just I have joined. Monthly meetings just with businesses, right, yeah. monthly meetings with right. parents, goes to principals, leads PD sessions, member okay. of Rotary and chamber attendance. Chamber, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oops, sorry, I don't turn my and mic I, on. I think that was in response to question number eight, Phil what you were talking about so I had rotary for 18 months as well but on that same on that section under public relations um, he did mention a quarterly um, business and community leader summit I had yeah. made note of that which I okay. thought was um, definitely an intriguing skill um, that he um, had um, I'll is it okay if I go on or yeah go ahead okay. Jen. Um, the other um, the other thing that um, I appreciated about Patrick was um, that he was enthusiastic about pre-K and early childhood education um, and mentioned the experience both of a pre-primary center as well as in local schools um, experience coming from Bay City. Um, the other thing that um, I really appreciated um, about Mr. Malley was um, the mention um, of culture survey, <coughs> finding out um, how students feel in regards to belonging um, as data to overlay with um, academic data and achievement data and growth data. Um, and that I think is something, um, that's a growing edge for us, I think in regards to figuring out exactly how our students feel. Um, that is something that's coming up the pike for us within a matter of weeks. Um, but that was something that has been established where he's at and, um, and I think that that's really valuable information. Um, I also 
am unsure exactly what um, Mr. Malley's vision would be for us. Um, I think that that is, you know, that's a secondary process. Like our first interview very much focused on um, on who they are. They were all were as individuals, not necessarily how they would impact Midland Public. And so um, I think that that in the future. And so I think that's a second interview type thing that I did not get from Mr. Malley. Ann? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I certainly don't want to sound like I'm parodying the folks that have come before me. Um, I found uh, Mr. Malley to be very personal, very friendly, um, a really excellent communicator. I, I was very confident that his communication um, would reach parents and students uh, as well as our staff and, and that he could provide transparency in communications. Um, I appreciated that he he has had some successes and failures when it comes to bonds and that he has you know, seemingly learned from those experiences. Um, I also like that he highlighted uh, that he is concerned with students learning, not just test scores, because at the end of the day, that is essential that our students are learning. Um, he also placed an emphasis on the tiered support for students, um, early childhood, uh, pre-K. He seemed to be fairly knowledgeable uh, regarding those areas. Um, and then I, I, did, I did feel that, and I, I think he only mentioned it briefly, but he had some uh, intentional thoughts regarding DEI and how you incorporate those into um, learning. Um, my reservations uh, regarding Mr. Malley are similar to those that have come before me. Um, I wasn't sure that he had a specific vision, and certainly that does come from being within a district. Um, I thought kind of the answers surrounding that were a little bit vague. Um, I did get the feeling that, uh, I, don't know, I don't know exactly how to say this, but that he thinks Midland doesn't have a lot of work to do. And certainly we are an excellent school district, but we can always do better. Um, and so I, I wasn't sure kind of what he would help us get to, what the next level was for him. Um, and aside from his, uh, his bond readiness, and this may be we just didn't ask the right questions, um, but I wasn't sure exactly what his financial experience was. And certainly we have Brian to <laughs> lead us in, in that regard, but I, I would have liked to hear a little bit more on what his experience was in that, um, in that aspect. Huh? Um, well, obviously, um, I think a lot of us probably had the same uh, a lot of the same comments, uh, but something that hasn't been mentioned is that at a time when he has not worked for our school district, he has chosen in his, you know, his family has chosen to enroll their kids mm -hmm. here. So he's already invested in our district. I, I thought that was a, that was a plus. Um, he seems, and, you know, I think every candidate that, that we looked at in the, the you know, the, the written applications and certainly the three that we've narrowed it down to all have their, their strengths and, and and perhaps uh, some weaknesses. I, he seems pretty balanced between, you know, the, the educator's educator and, um, you know, I, I think he's got some uh, external uh, externality uh, focus, his visibility in the community, um, and some of the, for lack of a better term, political considerations. Uh, that, uh, and I, th I thought there was a nice balance. Um, it's not to say that the other two didn't. Those were just some of my observations on, on Mr. Malley. All right. Go ahead, in John. In terms of Mr. Malley, I think his pros were, uh, I think as John just alluded to, he's familiar with our community. He sends his children here uh, as opposed to Bay City where he actually works. Uh, I think he's got a lot of experience with different Michigan schools, which I think is uh, always, uh, can always be a benefit to us. Um, and some of the comments he made on focusing on listening first and building resonance I thought was uh, very important. Uh, in terms of cons, I think uh, my biggest concerns were that he's uh, spent his time in smaller districts and I wasn't necessarily sure what he would bring new uh, to Midland uh, in this role. Thank you. So a lot of what my fellow board members have said, it's, it's what I wrote down, you know, good communication, vulnerability, and, and use of parents in decision-making. 
Um, he seems to do a good job of pulling the stakeholders together. <clears throat> he has innovation, innovative strategies for the communities involved in. Um, and I, I, he, he made one comment in particular that was, that caught me and, and I guess this wouldn't be surprised in my feedback to, to Brian's data presentation, but does use data and encouraging staff to become data literate. Um, in the cons, as a superintendent, one of the things that I think is imperative in the job is how do you, when you make decisions today, what are the implications five years from now? One of the things that he talked about that I highlighted was he's used his ESSER dollars at the, at Handy Middle School to allow teachers to work four hours instead of five hours. When the ESSER funds dry up, I don't know how he's going to pay for that. And what, the, the ESSER's not coming back and it, it, that concerned me a lot is to say ESSER was there for a reason to catch kids back up. How are you now going to walk yourself out of that decision? And, and I want, one of the traits that I look for in particular for a for a superintendent is evolution, not revolution, and we got to be careful about long-term decision making. Um, and then, similar to Scott, I, I did hear a number of times initiatives that they're taking on in their district that started in MPS five or seven years ago which maybe is a more reflection on where Mike was at in terms of a leader of our district than, than anything else. So, um, okay. So I'm gonna ask everybody a yes or no question. Can you see Patrick leading our district long-term? No. I'll say no. Brad? I think I'm still going to go with the same statement that I had when we began, that I need to know him on a, on a better level and or more information from him being involved in a day in the district to answer that question for you, Phil. Okay. Jen? I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you said John. Oh, oh sorry, Jen. Said Jen. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead, Jen. Um, no, I don't see Patrick Malley as our next superintendent. Anne? Well, I believe that Mr. Mallon will be an excellent superintendent. Uh, I don't believe that I see him as our next superintendent of the public schools. John? Lauterbacher had you go. Okay. Sorry. Uh, no, I, I can't say no at this point. Um, I, I'm not a no. Um, I, I, I agree with Brad. I'd like, I mean, we had 50 minutes. Uh, yeah. I, I'd like a little bit more time I mean, he's not he's not at the top of my list but I'm not a no so okay. I'd like a little more time to learn some more okay John I don't know okay I'm undecided on that uh, he is not at the top of my list though um, as hard as it is I'm gonna say that I don't know at this point I think there are key things that when you look back at our um, job posting that he meets a lot of the qualifications it, it, obviously he's got a long list of pros that we just listed out my key reservation is strategy for the district long term and long term decision making so not at the top of my list at this point but I, I think something that he could present back to us in a further round. Okay. <clears throat> um, next we had uh, Penny Miller Nelson. I'm gonna go the other way this time. I'm gonna start on my left and uh, ask John Hatfield to start. Let me catch up here for a second. All right. <clears throat> All right, 
Uh, from my standpoint, um, we all know Penny, very familiar with her. I think that uh, she's done a very good job um, in the interim role. Uh, and prior to that, uh, in charge of uh, <coughs> curriculum instruction and assessment um, in her previous role. I think from a pro standpoint, she's very fam very familiar with MPS. She's grown up in this com she's grown up in this community. Uh, seems like for essentially the entirety of her career, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, she's seen uh, multiple leaders. Uh, she's worked with many different administrators. Uh, she's had an, uh, the opportunity to develop her style um, of leadership. Uh, I think she's also a very good communicator. Uh, from a con standpoint, uh, something that um, I keep coming back to is that I wonder, is she too familiar with MPS? Has she been here for too long? Um, and that's, I don't want that to come off as a real negative, but it's something that we should consider if we're looking to, um, you know, as we're looking to our next leader, uh, and is that something that could potentially hold her thinking back, hold her approach back? Um, could people that are in the district, um, you know, be very comfortable with doing things the way that we've done, uh, done them in the past? So that's where I'll leave the cons. But um, overall, though, uh, as I said, she's done a very good job in the eight months that she's been the interim. John Lauterbach. Um, I think she has the, um, I've received you know, feedback from uh, a lot of our staff. Uh, she has the, the respect of, of our team. She's very well regarded uh, in the district already. Um, you know, we have a trial run with her. I mean, we, you know, by virtue of the fact that she's the interim. So we've seen her communication style. Um, she's been very good about uh, keeping us in the loop um, and, and keeping us abreast of what's going on in the district uh, and balancing that with not overloading us. But, uh, you know, as recently as today, we got text messages about a, uh, you know, a power outage and, and it was you know keeping you in the loop we're taking care of it and and that I think is you know shows a good balance um, you know between her running the day-to-day -day -day affairs of the district and, and, and the board being um, more of a high-level strategic uh, oversight um, I think if if there is a negative I you know when I look at Penny and her predecessor I see, you know, Penny's strength. Her, you know, her background is in curriculum, uh, and, in, and in service delivery. Um, it's not in facilities. It's not in finance. Um, you know, I think. I'm candidly, I, I think Mike was the opposite. I think Mike's mm -hmm. strength was facilities and, and and finance. And if he had a if he had a weak spot, it was it was curriculum and and, and actual service delivery. Um, so. You know, I'm, I'm not sure you ever find the, the perfect candidate, but you know, I think those are, are the things that I'm weighing in my mind about uh, about Penny. Thank you, Ann. I thought uh, Penny or Ms. <coughs> did a fantastic job um, interviewing. Of course, we're so familiar with her. Uh, you know, it was it was very comfortable. Um, I, um, I I hate to say that it's a pro, but I, one of my pros was she can hit the ground running. There's there's going to be no, you know, getting to know you um, period. Uh, I do appreciate that Penny is um, exceptionally honest um, and she really values communication. Um, I think she, I think she's in her you know, in her interview she may over communicate, which no concerns there. Um, I think that she is really building inroads with our staff, um, which is. Excellent. Uh, I've seen her interact with students, and I mean, I wish I could bring her home every night to interact with my my kids. I think she's phenomenal in that regard. Um, I think she has some great strengths. Um, certainly, the the John Lauterbach pointed out in curriculum. Um, some of my concerns um, are whether she can lead big change. Um, she is very comfortable in the district. She's been here for. A long time, um, and I just worry what I don't know that we've seen her, you know, lead a lead a big change. Um, I also worry that because she's so embedded, I wonder if she can examine prior decisions as carefully as kind of a fresh set of eyes could. 
Um, those are kind of my, my two, but um, I mean, I think she's an excellent candidate. Mm -hmm. Jen? Absolutely. Um, Ms. Miller Nelson um, has an exceptional relationship with the community. Um, because she has been here as long as she has, she's embedded in boards, she um, knows people in different organizations, she's, um, she mentioned having relationships with, with Meridian superintendent and you know, Bullet Creek superintendent and having, like you said, John, grown up with, um, with them in this community. And I think that um, that is a huge asset. Um, uh, Penny is also not afraid to ask for help which I think is a, um, an amazing skill in a superintendent. Um, as much as being a good communicator, um, uh, she reached out to Trapani to consult with us you know, for communication advice. Um, she always consults as a team um, that came through in her we, we, we um, during her interview, um, and that um, comes across with staff. She is part of, you know, um, of creating a team culture there with our admin uh, council, all of those things. Um, I think the other thing that is um, is really positive as a pro is the the reengagement of student voice um, and 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 meeting directly students where they're at and asking for their feedback um, in our high schoolers. And I think that that is um, is a really great skill. Um, again, if um, there are cons, it is the the dilemma of the internal candidate um, and and what does that mean when you know someone so well um, that it seems really easy to vision them in in the space and um, and does that make it harder to see other people and so I think that that is um, that's the would be the one thing that I would personally say is a struggle just catching up give me one second Thanks, Jen. Brad? Penny's team has 250 plus classroom visits in her short term, which is awesome. It's amazing. Being visible and connecting with teachers, a positive for her. Um, moving the agenda meeting throughout the district to be, again, more visible to all the teachers and principals and the students. Um, caring, kind, and clear communicator. Um, as Jen had said, and I think somebody else did, partnership with local communications firm is almost done. That is a wonderful thing. Um, she is a great educator, and that's her background, and she is strong in that. Um, I think her stamp of the 16 years is on the district already okay um, I would have to agree with uh, Mr. Lauterbach to say that um, possible weakness would be on the FFO side um, we're talking about needing to she captured it quite well is that we need to have facilities that match our powerful programming and I wholeheartedly agree with that statement. But the journey to get through that, I don't know if that is in her wheelhouse right at this moment in time. Um, and or to be as strong or as firm as we had to be through a pandemic of, of going through a COVID type, I don't know. That's some really hard decisions I know I hope we never ever have to go back to something like that ever again and we want to keep the kids in the classroom every single day but something really really tough like that I don't know because she is so compassionate that I think there's some tough decisions that have to be made at times that may not be her strength um, I think that um, Um, lost my train of thought here. Um, I 
I guess that's about it. I, I, okay. I think a lot of the other things have already been said. All right. Thanks, Brad. Mm -hmm. Scott? Um, a lot has been said about Penny. Um, I mean, her, her resume reads like a success story for MPS. It's page after page, uh, bullet point after bullet point of um, leadership experience and leadership skills and innovations and uh, programs that have been created and uh, leading attributes. Uh, she she checks off almost all the character and leadership traits that we in this community have identified in our district profile. Um, the lion's share of comments um, and feedback uh, from the notes and emails and uh, survey summaries and uh, talking to people in the community and uh, getting personal messages have all been in support of Penny for this position. Um, I think I think she actually will do well with tough decisions. Mike did not make all those decisions on his own um, during COVID. That was part of a team with those guys sitting over there in the audience, uh, including Penny. She was absolutely involved in that. Um, and I know that she has made some very tough decisions <coughs> recently uh, as far as personnel issues go uh, that have not been favorable. So, um, and she did those, it, it, it was very well thought out, very rationalized. Um, she, she really puts the needs of students first when she's making a decision. Uh, so there are a lot of things uh, that I like about Penny that I don't wanna uh, repeat um, as far as negatives uh, I, I agree with John and Brad in that um, there may be some FFO weakness uh, but I mean if, if that's what we're coming down to I think that can be easily supported um, with the people that we hire to, to bring those facilities reports and studies and with the council of the board and with the council of the FFO committee um, that can that can be uh, I think remedied quite easily uh, the one thing that I do want to see her do or, or work on is building um, business relationships uh, I, I think um, Patrick had a good idea with that and, and if we could adopt something and, and I don't know that she does anything like that maybe she does um, and we and we or or I don't know about it uh, but if I had to find a weakness um, I think they're scarce, but uh, the business relationships is, is something that I would like to see developed. Thanks, Scott. Um, for me, a couple things I wrote down, I'm gonna repeat some of these, but for, for, for consistency, um, wrote down loyalty and staff engagement. In, in particular, I highlighted the 250 building visits. I think there is something to be said for the continuity of the systems that we have in place, in particular the MTSS, um, and, and really having knowledge of the community, the school community and all of the systems that support our students. I think in, a, in terms of decision making, she exemplifies reflecting and taking a deep breath and getting community involvement. Um, I think one of the really unique things that she brings to the table is having grown up in a rural community, having a passion for CTE, that is something that is becoming more and more a strength of MPS and it's gonna continue to grow because of her. Um, and I think at MPS, one of the things that we have a difficult time doing is making sure that we are not just the district of college bound students, but students that can achieve whether they go in the military, CTE, um, post-secondary education or secondary education, post-secondary education, or, um, the, the business community right away. And I think Penny has shown in the last eight months that she's really able to balance that. Um, it has been overwhelming, the amount of feedback that I've gotten just out in the community. I, I don't know about you, but just going out to dinner right now is a challenge with 
how <laughs> bombarded you get by community members that say, what the heck are you guys even doing? Um, we love Penny. She's such a, so engaged in this community and is leading the district in an appropriate direction. But um, that's one piece of feedback. So we have to take that into consideration for, for what it is. Um, I think like everybody else, I, I did write down creating the case for change is going to be tough for Penny. I think it's always tough to create a case for change when you're a top four or five percent district in every curriculum measure there is. But I, um, I, I do appreciate the comments about facilities. Um, you know, one of the things that the board does get to see more closely than I think the community gets to see is the work of the ad admin council mm -hmm. and the employees that report directly to the superintendent. I, I think it's safe to say that Penny's admin council would run through a brick wall for her. 100%. And I do consider the impact of what that admin council looks like as you hire a new superintendent. Um, I don't know anybody stronger at facilities than Brian and can really round out Penny in that as well. So um, that it, it is a kind of some of the things that I think about. We are hiring a superintendent, but that superintendent, all, you're, you're hiring that superintendent's team as well. I wanted to just add on to uh, something Ann said. Um, we, we've received a, a number of comments um, I, both online and, and personally to me, uh, mostly from teachers that have indicated that Penny is changing the culture of MPS and that she is moving things forward um, and, the, and that the change is real and, and palpable. And she's doing it importantly right now. It's happening. She's driving it. Um, there will be no uptake. She can start tomorrow and continue with that process. Uh, so I think that's a, an important consideration as well. Okay. Mr. Hatfield, could you see Penny as our next superintendent? Yes. 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 Brad? My answer is yes. Um, but I don't know if it would have been eight months ago because I've gotten to know her. Mm -hmm. and work through some of these things. And that's why I think it's so important um, to get to know these other candidates. I know I sound like a broken record, but I didn't know that, I didn't know Penny well enough eight months ago to, to know if she's gonna be the next picture on the wall of, of the leader of the district. Mm -hmm. But my answer is yes, that she could do that because I know now with working with her. But I still think it's imperative to continue with our process. Okay, Scott? Absolutely, yes. Oh my yes. <clears throat> okay. So the third candidate <clears throat> that we interviewed was Dr. Reed. Let me get my stuff further organized here. on Jen to start first this time. So Dr. Reed. Um, Dr. Reed was extremely engaging. Um, as a new and different voice, I completely resonated with his comment about the fact that scholars learned during COVID um, and they learned things that we didn't even know that they needed to know. Um, and I think that that um, Yes, we have to deal with the learning loss, but there's also um, different things. Um, he mentioned 
technology, chat, GTP, AI, like those sorts of things um, that we need to be thinking about um, that are new and different. Um, I also appreciated um, his complete and utter commitment to calling our young people scholars. Um, there was not a single misstep in that. There was this resonance and belief in the fact that all of our young people are learners and, um, and achievers. Um, I think that he brings an extremely different level of experience. Um, he doesn't have background in anything that looks like MPS. So whether you put that as a pro or a con, eh. <laughs> kind of both, I don't know. Um, and um, he was extremely clear, I think, about the way that he wants to communicate um, with board members, with admin council, with staff. Um, he said that anything you communicate, you need to follow up on. So you pick what you're gonna communicate about um, and recognize the fact that principals get 100 emails a day. Um, that's, that's a reality, and so how do you eliminate that overflux of information. Um, there are still, from a con standpoint, a lot of questions. Um, I think one of my biggest questions is why Midland, why MPS? I did not feel like I got that answer. Um, and I would like to know more. I would like to know why this change from these inner city schools, these big communities out of state to this tiny town in the, you know, relatively middle of nowhere um, <laughs> in Michigan. Um, and so um, because he's so unfamiliar, there's just things we, we can't know, you know? I mean, even the, the journey to get here was unknown for him um, as opposed to, you know, our other two candidates who are very close and close to home. Um, I definitely would like to be able to ask more questions of Dr. Reed. Mixing it up. Mixing it up. I'll just volunteer to go next. Sure. And I'm going to start with the con, and that is he's moved around a lot. Um, you know, been, he hasn't been anywhere for more than three years. Um, you know, 14 to 17, 19, 19, 20, from 19 to 20, 21 to 22. I think when he was an assistant principal. Right, for sure. And that was that was uh, you know eleven years in Chicago. But then it's you know 2014 to 2017, uh, 19 to 20, uh, 21, 22. You know, and these all look like moves up, and that's great. But I wondered the same thing about well, wait a minute. You're, I mean, he said I he had really no connection to the state of Michigan. I, I got the impression that we are his next opportunity. And maybe that's maybe having somebody who has no connection to the community, no preconceived notions about what we ought to do or the way we've always done things. Maybe that's great, but I'm I'm kind of with Jennifer. Like I I don't know. I just <coughs> got a, a vibe that I, I want to ask more questions. So, um, very engaging. I think he understands the role of a school district in a community. We're not an island. We exist to, you know, to partner with the, the, the community, the employers in the community, the business enterprises in the community. But I have a lot of, uh, a lot of questions about uh, the portability of this. Uh, I'll go next. Um, I, I, I liked his energy. I. Thanks. Yeah. You got it. Sorry. 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 Um, I, I liked his energy. I liked um, his messaging about how much he cares about his students and uh, the work that he's been able to achieve in inner city uh, schools that are very, very different um, from where we're at. And that's good for him. <coughs> I don't know how he will handle a transition coming to a very high achieving district. So. Uh, that was one thing I was a little bit uh, concerned about. Um, his communication style, I, I think, is great. I don't think it's that different from the communications that um, we're receiving now or communication style that uh, 
Patrick has discussed. Um, I think all three of them are, are excellent communicators. Uh, I, you know, I agree with John. There was one thing I, I, you know, noted on his resume. It's, you know, a year and six months here, eleven months there, seven months here, two two months, he, two years here. Just a lot of bouncing around, and, and I was. Uh, it does feel like we would be a stepping stone. And man, I don't want to go through this process again in two years. Um, if if he decides he's not a fit for um, for our community or, or our district, uh, it just seems like a big shift to make. Um, so I would worry about longevity. Uh, I would also worry about the uptime with him. How long is it going to take uh, to get up to speed to where we're at, and then? What do you do with that time lost while he's getting up to speed? Uh, we've got a lot of, you know, irons in the fire. And do we have a year? Do we have 18 months? Do we have whatever it takes to get up to speed and get him engaged in all of the community organizations that uh, we already have a member actively engaged in? Um, I don't know. I think that that could be a shortcoming as well. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I thought that Dr. Reed brought a very interesting outlook, um, different than probably all of us uh, were expecting. Um, I think he brought a very different perspective uh, to uh, his approach to education. I think he's got large and small school experience. Um, I'll reiterate what Jen said in terms of his use of the word scholar. I thought that was very impactful. Um, and I think he's thinking about things differently, uh, which is a good thing for us and probably something we need to do more of as a district. Um, I also agree that his discussion of what kids learned from COVID um, and took away from COVID was very impactful and showed that he's thinking differently about things. Um, from a con standpoint, I don't think he did enough research on our district. Um, and that's about the one thing I would take away from the interview from a negative standpoint. So I don't necessarily know where he is in terms of understanding where we are, MPS, in terms of a district. In terms of a district, but you know, a, an additional pro, and I don't think we should ignore this, is the fact that we've discussed challenges in terms of bringing diverse teachers to our community. Uh, we've had a number of initiatives over the last number of years, um, and I don't think they've uh, produced what we've expected them to. Uh, and I think we need to look at ourselves and say, well, why aren't we getting diverse teachers to come to Midland? Why aren't we getting our district is becoming more diverse, um, and there uh, are a number of kids that are in our schools these days that aren't seeing teachers that look like them. So. Um, could a change at the top help us in that regard? And I think that's something that we need to, uh, we need to be asking ourselves the tough questions uh, because uh, I think from a candidate standpoint, educationally, uh, Dr. Reed seems like uh, he could do the job. Um, I do have some questions. He does need to learn and understand uh, more about MPS and uh, I have more questions for him around that, but those are my thoughts. Go ahead. Um, I thought Dr. Reed was um, really exciting and inspiring. Um, I liked his intentionality, especially regarding his communications. Um, not to parrot what John said about scholars, but I really appreciated the amount of respect that he has for his students and understanding that they are at the center um, and when they want to make change and he is supportive or with them, that that they that he and the students can work together to make it happen. I thought he brings some, or I think he brings some actual experience to the table. Um, I liked uh, when we did ask him why Midland, uh, I liked how he talked about how he really wants to get to each school and kind of embed in the school and see what is going on, see what changes can be made, see what change is happening. Um, it seems as though he brings people together and I think he certainly has potential to inspire students and staff to be better, do better, um, and just really bring people together. Um, his cons, uh, the lack of MPS knowledge, um, I don't think he's gonna, I, I mean this in jest, 
I don't think he's going to win any geography competitions uh, <laughs> anytime soon when it comes to Michigan. Um, yeah, his lack of MPS knowledge, not being able to identify, uh, besides us being a smaller district, kind of why he wanted to come here. He briefly mentioned having some family in Michigan, um, but didn't get much further than that. My other concern is it, it seems as though he is used to big change all the time, and I have questions about whether he can come in and fine tune, and if he has any experience fine tuning things. Um, I also did have some questions regarding his finance experience, kind of FFO experience, uh, but I think that's stuff that we could probably flush out with more conversations. Go ahead, Brad. Um, very similar thoughts to uh, comments that were made. Um, when I did ask him the question about going after a big bond, um, I led into that to say that we're not a broken district. We have the best teachers. We have a staff that is amazing. We have awesome students, um, but we need to tweak and we need to do some things and we need to improve. Um, so it's, it's not the big overall change that we need, but we need constant and commitment to change. Um, flat out, uh, this is a, a resume of a shooting star. He will be a very successful superintendent whether that's here or not, I don't know. A um, couple comments. Yes, we were reading everything that you send in. Um, are we ready for him? Is he ready for us? I don't know. I, sp I got to spend 50 minutes with the gentleman. I need to know more about this guy. Um, the comment that really resonated with me is that each student has to see themselves in the curriculum. And people that see their, themselves in the curriculum are going to be excited about going to school and going to go to school every day with a purpose. Um, I like his athletic background. That appeals to me. He's a winner. He's a competitor. Um, he says, I like to win. Is exactly what he said. That appeals to me. Um, FFO experience? I don't know. I don't see a lot of it here, but I've only met the guy for 50 minutes. So I'd love an opportunity to spend some more time getting to know him. Um, <clears throat> he's a rock star. I, I think he's, he's, he's got a lot of a promise in, in his short career, and he's did it from the ground up. He didn't skip a step. Now, is our step only two years? I don't know. I really don't. But I'd like to get to know him better. If, can I add one thing? I yep. did men make note while he was talking about the fact that in his current position, the superintendent as his DEI lens, that budgeting goes through him. So it seems like he is looking at some FFO mm -hmm. things and pretty involved at, um, in his current position. So. Yep. A um, couple other things just to reiterate, I thought he exemplified the capabilities to connect with at-risk students. Um, and really, I think that's where his heart is. And we, we need that in our district. Our at-risk populations doubled in the last 15 years. Um, so I thought that he can bring a great perspective, in particular, how to get parents of at-risk students engaged in the school. Um, and I think, uh, you know, each of you have already repeated many of the, the th or I, I would have repeated many of the things that you've already said. Um, I think he, he really engages in the community, um, embeds in the school, um, will be a successful superintendent. Other, in terms of cons, a couple things I noted or lack of research into Midland and Midland Public. It, it caught me off guard that you would apply for a job like this and not do more research, um, come into the community earlier, those kind of things. 
Um, I did worry about the lack of knowledge in Michigan law. Um, it, we don't have mayoral involvement in our schools. Um, we appreciate everything that Maureen does, but she has her stuff to manage. We have our stuff to manage. Um, I think it also caught me off guard how involved he wanted the board to be in the school. I, I think there's a, in Michigan in particular, there's a very distinct line on what our role is and what the superintendent's role is, and it seemed very, very blurry with him. Um, and then one of the things that I had a lot of consternation about was he increased graduation rates by reducing requirements in reducing credit hours to graduate. And that is not MPS. And I wanted to double check that in particular. If, if somebody has other notes on how they wrote that down in response to that question that the, his internal district required more hours than what the state required. And that was frustrating the students' success because they had to achieve, internal district was like 42 credit or something. I can't remember exactly how he phrased it, but you only had to have 28 to graduate in the state. Mm -hmm. So that's how I, I can look back through my notes, but. Um, and I understood it as the uh, policy that he was talking about, he, or he also talked about the, the issue with the 90-10. 90% yeah. of grading is based on, 90% is based test, on test, testing, testing and, and test. yeah. And that was a change that he made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had that the school yeah. district had 45 credit requirement and the state required 32 credits. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, One other thing I wanted to let, uh, background, yes, he could have done more studying, but I believe he said he watched all the board meetings going back to November. Mm -hmm. So he did, mm -hmm. he didn't do zero, he did some, okay. so. I also was trying to put into perspective the fact that he is our only out of state person and we made the decision to invite him on the 20th and he had to figure out how to rearrange his life and get here by mm -hmm. the 26th. So that, you know, I mean, if he's as deeply involved in a gigantic school district as it seems, that would potentially be problematic as far as getting here and all of that, so. Yep, good point. Um, okay, tough question. I'll start with Ann. Can you see Dr. Reed in our district? Yes. Mr. Lauterbach? I don't know yet. I'm not, I'm not a no. I'd like more information. Mr. Hatfield? Yes. McFarland? No. Brad? I think that Dr. Reed is going to be a phenomenal superintendent. Is that here at Midland Public Schools? I don't know the answer to that, Phil. <laughs> Okay, Jen? With a chance to ask some more questions, yes. As hard as this is to say, I don't think I can see him being our next superintendent. I think he will be an extremely successful superintendent somewhere else. Um, he's just young. He's He's been in his role for a year and six months, he, but he is you said he's a rock star mm -hmm. and, and that's I think that fits him to a T he has done wonderful wonderful things I just personally I think he's got a little ways to go mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay um, couple things for us to think through we've now summarized feedback for each of these three candidates I think it's imperative that we if it's okay with each of you I'll type these up and and make sure I didn't miss anything um, and provide 
you know, we can review it uh, next board meeting, make sure that it was captured correctly, and we owe it to the candidates to provide this feedback to them in, in written form. Um, I think the, the other things that we need to talk about tonight are how many candidates we want to invite back for a day in the district, um, how we want to make sure that that is formatted, and then additionally, we have another date set up for final round interviews and how we want that session to be formatted. Um, so those are the um, things that I think we should talk through so we can take them each one at a time and then work through them. Does anybody have any issue if I type these up, provide them to Sarah for re final review at our next board meeting before we issue them? Well, and I, I mean, we just said it okay. to the public, so I, I think we would just, we would document it. It would be a letter from the Board of Education to the following individuals and summarizing their feedback. Any, any issue? Um, second, how many candidates do we want to invite back for day in the district? Um, so I'll open the floor up for discussion now on, you know, obviously appreciate Brad's input. Um, you know, we did review 16 fantastic applicants. We've narrowed it down to three already. Um, you know, we've, we've now had an interview for an hour with each, each of the candidates. We've, we've poured through their background and history how do we go forward um, at this point, and how many people do we want at the uh, day in the district? The, the good question. My answer to all three is, if we don't see somebody as a viable candidate, it is not fair, in my opinion, it is not fair to them to take their time. Um, to ask them to come in to do something as a formality. So that I think we owe it to them. I know it doesn't feel kind, but the kind thing to do right now is to say no if the answer is going to be no. So. Based on our responses when you asked us that question across the board, um, there are two people who had yeses um, and a couple of I don't knows. There is one person who had definite noes and um, more I don't knows with no yeses. So. Do, you want me to recap that? And that is, that is Patrick to, that had yes. three noes. Just knows. to be specific, you, yes. you know, make sure we're on the same page. Yes. So I captured three noes for Patrick yep. and four I don't knows. Correct. I captured seven yeses for Penny. Yeah, seven yeses for Penny, and then I captured three yeses, two noes, and two I don't knows for Dr. Reed. Correct. Personally, I think seven yeses for Penny is telling. Um, I, for me, I don't think another interview is going to move the needle enough to convince me that um, if we decide to just go with uh, Penny and Dr. Reed, that. Um, Dr. Reed will uh, be able to surpass um, Penny in terms of qualifications, achievements, etc. Um, so I don't know that, this is just me personally, I, I don't feel that uh, a second interview really is warranted for either Patrick or Antoine. I, I don't want to waste their time or our time. Um, I, I do like them both and I think they are tremendous. Um, educational leaders, uh, but I, I believe in my heart of hearts that uh, they are not the fit that we're looking for at this point in time. Well, I think we have to answer the question of what purpose does the in the district serve? Are we looking for feedback from staff, students, other groups? If 
so. I feel like we should give them the opportunity to meet two or three, as the case may be, of our, our candidates because we need to collect that final yes. layer of feedback before we can make a decision. I would 100% agree. And it's staff, yes. students, other community members who did not have an opportunity to be here at our meetings and observe and give us give us their feedback. I think yeah. that's I think we owe it to ourselves um, and we owe it to the process uh, to have to have at least two of them uh, do the go through the day in the district. I would agree that we ask for data all the time and we hired a firm with a process especially for getting us community data so to not follow that process through to fidelity is is unfair to our community okay let's take them one at a time and maybe we just do a motion for each of them to go into the day of the district does that work for everyone so let's start with the rankings that we just used. So does anybody have a motion to see Penny as a candidate in day of the district? So moved. Second. Support. Okay. <clears throat> I forgot that Scott's no longer the president, so we gotta <laughs> hold on. <laughs> motion by Lauterbach and who had the second? Any discussion on Ms. Miller Nelson as day in the district? Okay. All in favor of, of Penny for day in the district, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries 7 0. <clears throat> uh, next, we had Dr. Reed. So moved. Motion by Ringgold, support by Horowitz. Any discussion on Dr. Reed on day in the district? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. For reasons previously stated. All right. 6-1. And Mr. Malley. So moved. Motion by Lauterbach. Second. Support by Blasey. <clears throat> All in, oh, sorry, any discussion on seeing Mr. Malley as candidate for day in the district? So I will just say that based on our responses from the first time, if we're going to do a day in the district and we're going to have them on the same day, having two candidates as opposed to three makes it easier for them to engage more effectively with staff, with students, with business leaders, as opposed to trying to run through three mm -hmm. sessions, committing to two longer sessions, I think is more efficient for our community. And, and, and I'll add that three, three of us said no. Um, and the remaining four were undecided. There was not a yes vote for him, so. Um. And if we're truly seeking feedback, I think we want to have the candidates have the most time with these groups that are going to provide us. Maybe the better motion feedback. would be to exclude him? Or just not support well, I think, him? I think we have to. Yeah. We have to vote on the motion. Yeah. Yeah. Vote on this motion. Yeah. Um, I think you're right, Jen, in that the process that we've collaboratively gone through, I really struggle if it's fair to Patrick to bring him back, both to him as a candidate and our community, given the engagement. So um, any further discussion on Mr. Malley? All in favor of bringing Mr. Malley in for Day in the district, say aye. 
Aye. Aye. All oppo any opposed? Aye. 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 That's four. I think it's five two. Oh, All five two. Yeah. Five two. Okay. <clears throat> or two five. Two five. Okay. So we will extend invitations to Ms. Miller Nelson and Dr. Reed for day in the district. Um, as Ms. Ringgold talked about, we have sample agendas for two candidates for day in the district. Does anybody have any questions about those? And um, I can, if I can find it fast enough, yeah, I'm not for right now. I know I just looked at them later today. It's in the crew, isn't it? You remember, it's Sarah? It's, it's, there's a placeholder for it. It's, it's not there. there. He sent some samples to me, and Brian and Jeff and I were working on that today, okay. waiting for the your final decision about which candidates can be moving forward. Okay. So I can send that to you. Do you. I know I'm putting you on the spot, but can you summarize the engagement groups that the... So how do we, let's, let's talk about this for a second, because what's going on in my mind is. You're still splitting the community, they're not getting mm -hmm. to see both. Yeah, we, we would have groups that don't get to see both candidates and compare them. Um, do we, do we, is that important to us to make sure that the same teachers and staff we need, to, some parents. we need to get this that's, that's the whole we, reason we, just we need to get it fixed. It. It's not that's yeah. okay. that's not what we're planning on. It was the same people. Are we all are we all in yeah. agreement on the same people yeah. see both candidates? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Sorry. are there <laughs> Well this is why we're right, talking this about good. This is good. Um, are there opportunities in which we could have basically their days mirrored? So they're seeing and, and struggle because I don't know instructional time well enough and I'm looking at Brian for a second to know like can we get the same staff members to meet morning and then afternoon with each candidate or well that you said it's an all staff yeah, yeah why don't you so just come up to the could, could it be a two-day split well I guess that's another option too but then you're 
you're kind of disrupting days two days in a row. Yeah, the biggest thing is the students and the building walkthroughs. Um, forgive me, I'd have dressed better if I'd have known. <laughs> <laughs> um, the way that we had initially designed it is that there would only be one group that wouldn't see both, and that would be students. Okay. Um, when we designed it, it was more building tours okay. um, than it was actual staff meet and greets. And so you would have in the morning when it started off, as what Ms. Dooley said, um, admin center, they'd both be here, and we would divide. Basically, one would go one way, we'd introduce around, one would go the other way, and then they'd split. Um, to different schools as Sarah pointed out they wouldn't see the same students I understand that um, but in the evening the second portion we do have it split where the same group see the same candidate um, so ad council gets a half hour block they switch up one's on a break one's not um, we're happy to send this draft to you Phil um, okay. and we can tweak and modify we can absolutely customize this to whatever the wishes of the board are. There's just some complexities that we'll work out on our end, and we'll make sure that whatever the wishes of the board are, we make sure that they get carried out. Um, but we are cognizant of making sure that community, staff, et cetera, all get to see those candidates. It would have just been students, and that was complicated based on the lunches um, and going through that. Understood. I'd be interested to see if there's some way to utilize technology to allow Anything's possible. <laughs> so we're happy to share that with you. Um, get your feedback on it. If we need to make tweaks, we can definitely make tweaks to those. Okay. 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 Thanks, Brian. Now that it's down to two, we should be able to yeah. put this together. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> let me just pull up my calendar, make sure we're all on the same page for dates. So we are currently discussing the day in the district to be the 13th, right? 13th, yeah. 13th. Uh, yeah, I thought it was 12th, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? The 12th. 12th. Okay. okay. Um, where, is there any board engagement on the schedule, Sarah? Yes. And what time is it? During the lunch time. Okay. I... I have let uh, Scott, as our vice president, know that I will be out of town that week on business travel. So Scott has graciously agreed to, to be one of the hosts for the uh, candidates. Did anybody else able to participate at lunch um, during that day in the district? More as a... Okay. Um, so I think Ann, John... Jen and Scott. Okay. Um, yeah, two and two, probably for lunch. Appreciate that. Um, let's discuss as well because I would like to talk to the candidates about. Uh, they, I think they need to make observations while they're in day in the district that would inform the interview session that we currently have slated for March 20th. 20th. Mm -hmm. So can we talk briefly about how we want to see March 20th go? Phil, I got a couple quick yeah. comments. One, for the lunch, if if John and I are able to attend, we're still legal, we have two groups of three. three, three. Right. Yeah. So that would be fine. Yeah. Um, we're not voting on anything else tonight at this point in time because the no. puck, puck drops at 7.15, yeah. so I need to leave. <laughs> You're good. Brad's like, I'm out. So yeah. I just want to make sure that we're not voting on anything else. Uh, I don't think we need a motion for the last thing that we talk about. So okay. please make sure that you s Carry your, on. Yes. your kids are much more important, so thank you. Thanks, Brad. Thank you, Brad. See you, Brad. See good you. luck. Go Chemex. Um, just want to talk quickly, if, I think the last kind of thing that we should discuss is what do we want to how do we want to format March 20th 
what I was thinking about was we can just do a, a, a normal q and A. I was wondering if we want like four or five slides about vision yes. and and like a thirty minute presentation to the board on specific topics, mm -hmm. followed up by q and A. They should have direction. We did like that. common questions that are asked or yeah. procedures for second for, rounds. Yeah, we did He that has like questions for the second round. But not that presentation piece. Is that there, would be completely up to us. Is there any way for us to engage uh, the community to get questions uh, prior to the final interview? That we, well, they, that, we would, that we would ask on their behalf? Well, they will have access to the HYA portal again for a day in the district. Okay. They'll have so, a QR. The but, it, but it will be the same questions. Same questions. Yep. Yeah, it will be assets and okay. concerns. I just just wondering if there's an opportunity to field questions from the community to potentially make it onto our list. You can email us. You can email yeah. us. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I'm always just cognizant of we're representatives of the community and need to do their work for them. But um, I, I always want to encourage engagement as well. So. Um, is there a community question time? Can we give the community 20 minutes to come up to the podium and ask direct questions? I don't know if that's, that's something. That's a hot seat. Hot seat. Yeah. <laughs> a real hot seat. I don't know. I mean, it, we do, it does give us some insight into how uh, a superintendent would, res would respond to difficult questions at a board meeting. <laughs> Is there a time limit though? Like, how do you choose who gets yeah. to answer yeah. questions and ask questions? And there aren't really yeah. moments where the community is asking, ask and response sessions. Yeah, I think I think the community the community is going to have time to engage during day in the district, yeah. and I think those should well, be. And we could solicit input from the community about the questions that yes. they want us to ask as yes. well, so that we could kind of review yes. them, and, you know. Yeah. So that they don't get a complete out of left field oddball yeah. question. So let's so. let's do this then. If we plan This is for the twentieth Yeah. Because we also have our regular scheduled board meeting on the eighteenth. We could We could review the final draft questions on the 18th. The, there's pros and cons as to letting the candidates know what the questions are, yeah, right? Yeah, so, uh, right. Right. Okay. I mean, I think if we if we request a presentation, Mark, that's going to give us a fair amount of insight. Yeah. Do we want those presentations ahead of time for us to review them? Or just go live. I would say just go live. Okay. Yeah. So I was thinking the twentieth is probably a thirty-minute max presentation on your experiences of day in the district, your reflections on the Midland community, and some vision set, some high-level vision setting for what you want to see in the district. Um, and then it's 30 minutes of Q&A from the board. That's how I was thinking about formatting. Mm -hmm. And we have... So that would take us to 9 o'clock. We have two and a half hours booked from 7 to 9.30. Yep. So if we did an hour with a break in the middle, a 15 minute break, and then another hour, we should be... Should we start? I mean, we can... We've got plenty of time to change the time of that special board meeting. Should we start it at 5.30? Say start at 6. Or 6? I'd say six started at six. <laughs> first five. Sorry? Six is five. Six. 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 Yeah. One more time. Yeah. Okay. Okay.
and moves that we change the time. I, I'll make a motion to change the March 20th board meeting to begin at March 18th. March 18th. No, no, no. No, no, no. no, 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 no. 20th. 20th. It's, sorry, it's, sorry, it's a okay. special meeting, sorry. right? Yep. On the 20th. Right. Is, I move to change the time, the start time of the special board meeting scheduled for March 20th to 6 p.m. Second. Support. Motion by Horowitz. Support by Hatfield. All in favor of changing March 20th special board meeting to 6 p.m. Say aye. 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 Um, okay. Anything else we should discuss now in terms of logistics or questions or anything else? So we will communicate the format for the presentation to both candidates so that they're thinking about it while they're in, they're in the district and, and, and engaging that way. Um, any further discussion? Phil, so I'd just like to say thank you for calmly leading us through this, and I want to give a big shout out to the admin team, who I don't believe has to be here, but is fully devoted to MPS and has come and sat through the interviews on all four meetings. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. you. Well Happy said. to do so. Thanks, Phil. Um, and I'm I would also like to say thank you for the community. Um, we got a lot of emails, um, QR code responses, not as many as I was hoping for, um, but it, um, especially the emails that came, um, that takes a lot to put yourself out there and not anonymously, so yeah. thank you. Yep. Yep. I agree, and I was disappointed at the number of folks that were actually in the room watching the interviews, but uh, I think the emails that came through afterwards were uh, very appreciated, so thank you. I. I did reflect that it is a service to our community to record these meetings so that they can watch. And I think Mr. Malley actually mentioned, you know, it's not used to that, right? So thank you, Dave, for the work that you're, you and your team do. My mind is open. I want to say that. I know I was a no on Dr. Reed, but look, he can change my mind. So I want to provide I'll that. leave you with one parting thought. I, I talked to a board member who was on the board when the, when the district hired Art Frock, and he said, "I was Art Frock was my last choice, and 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 the other the guy that was my number one choice, you know the board disagreed. We hired Art. That guy went and took a job at another district, and within the first school year, completely flamed out. It was horrible, and Art was phenomenal. So." Just bear that in mind that yep. we don't, we got to keep an open mind. We got to keep the same, the same thing, John. And Mike was my last choice. Well, there you go. So <laughs> I, you just, you don't know. That's no, no. And, yep. So we're, we're doing the, we're asking a lot of questions. We're, we're doing the work, doing the work. We're, we've got a great process here. So let's yeah. Yeah. let it work. Yeah. Yep. And they ended up being great friends. <laughs> but, yeah. I will uh, take a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Stand adjourned.